when I was hired, the first thing I asked, I wanted to play with some IMAX cameras because you hear all these horror stories about refrigerator cameras uh -huh. that are kind of unworkable. So I did a test and they gave me some cameras and I, I, I got all the lenses. And then after the test, I told IMAX, uh, I feel the lenses are not wide enough. And they were like looking at me like I was crazy. So, uh, so I had to, they built a special lens for me in London. They rehoused a still camera lens to fit the IMAX and, and it's really super wide. Uh, there's other TV shows that do really experimental, really cool stylistic things, you know, like the first season of True Detective, you know, they're very stylistic. Uh, or Mr. Robot, and I wanted to bring, yeah, my style is really, really big wide, wide shots and then really tight shots. I really like that. And uh, so I did that as well on the, uh, on the IMAX screens, yeah. I've heard you say right now <coughs> that there are seven production houses across the planet working yes. on um, v VFX for yeah, the series. Yes. And you're here. For my two episodes. For your two episodes. Yes. How do you oversee that? I mean, what, how does that work? The world is really small, you know, and internet, uh, you have all these decoded programs, so I can see footage and you give notes. But uh, yeah, we have 600 visual effects shots in the two episodes, what is unheard of. We're having a full CG character, what is Lockjaw. Yeah. And, uh, and then we have the most complicated visual effects ever, what is Medusa's hair, so it's nerve-wracking. So we have talking about really long hair that is moving, that is interacting, that is really powerful, it has a lot of strength. And then also I wanted to shoot it really close. You know, <laughs> I wanted to be really big close on this hair and see the details. And, and nobody has done that before. So what I suggested, there was this house in Sweden that I know about that they, they are very good at water and sharks. They are a specialist in that. So we asked them to do it and they, they were first hesitating, <laughs> but then they took the job and they did an incredible job. But it was really, it's so time consuming. Mm. So when we released the first trailer, we were not able to show anything yet because it was not ready. I mean, when, when they were sort of umming and ahhing about taking on the job, did it suddenly make you think, mm, should I have done those close-up shots? Was that a bad idea? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> no, no, and, and it even made, made it worse, because also I created a few uh, long takes with her. Because I, I think if you trick an audience with visual effects, uh, if you cut it up, mm -hmm. it becomes a trick. But if you show it in full length, length shots with 360 degree camera movements, it makes it more impressive. Bringing this world alive has its difficulties, of course, technical difficulties, but none more so, I should imagine, than bringing Lockjaw to life. This large yes. dog. No, no, when I saw the comics and I saw this huge dog and I first thought, that we could not afford full CG character and that I had to do like a forced perspective with a real dog. But then everybody was like, yeah, but there's so much interaction. So it was kind of impossible to do that all with a real dog and then composite it in. So we went for a full CG dog and then we went to the best visual effects house, Double Negative uh, in Canada and uh, they creating this creature. And, and the first time I saw kind of a first test, I was like, nobody's gonna believe it's a CG character, nobody. Because it, lo it, it looks like a dog, it drools like a dog. Is he, is he going to steal the show? No, think? he's gonna be the biggest star. He's gonna be the biggest star of all.